Some creationists try to argue that one of the proofs that their mythical flood happened is that the population of the Earth today exceeds 6 billion people. In doing so, they commit a number of fallacies that they do not acknowledge and even try to gloss over or completely ignore as if they're not a problem. However, these glaring faults are deal breakers for their myth and each independently breaks the appearance of scientific inquiry that they try to claim they are conducting in the pursuit of their mythical flood. One of the claims they've made is that the population will grow exponentially regardless of other outside factors. This is incorrect and the reasons will be outlined in this supplement. Before I get onto the population argument, there is a single insurmountable argument that creationists do not take into account. China. That's right, the Chinese had already existed since before their supposed flood. No mention of a global flood event is to be found in their records. Let's go at this from the creationist point of view for a moment. Let's start with eight people. Of those eight people, they are all couples. Each couple has three children, each person therefore has 1.5 children per generation. The subsequent generation will therefore have 12 people. So let's assume that at this point every generation will form couples and that each generation will produce three children per couple. Each generation is 30 years. These are the average figures. Starting from eight people, four couples, discounting the previous generation who we will assume die of old age after having their third offspring. The pattern developed here is that the population will increase by 50% per generation. So after 15 generations, we would have approximately 3,503 people. This is using a very basic calculation, which will demonstrate the creationist point that the population increases exponentially. At first glance, this appears clear-cut, right? Wrong. The problem is not maximum reproductive capability. The problem is the carrying capacity of the environment, which in itself will place a maximum limit on the population that it can sustain. Let's now assume that our initial population is in an environment that can sustainably grow food sufficient for 5,000 people and rerun our calculation. Everyone above 5,000 will die off due to a lack of resources. In other words, they will starve to death. So starting again with 8 people, 4 couples. Now right here at the 16th generation we have neared our maximum limit. On generation 17, 4,797 people, one is left out, the other couple up and there are 2,398 couples. Each of these has three children. This leaves us with 7,194 offspring in the following generation. That's 2,194 more than the carrying capacity of the environment. So those 2,194 surplus will not survive to reproduce and instead will starve to death. This leaves us with 5,000 people who survive to reproduce. The next generation has those 5,000 people in it. If we run this one more time, those 5,000 people pair up, have three children each, and the subsequent generation will have 7,500 people in it. That's 2,500 more than can be supported by the environment. Again, anyone above 5,000 will die off and will not survive to reproduce. So again, we're left with 5,000 people. Now this pattern will continue in perpetuity until one of three things happens. The first is that the population reduces its breeding levels to lower the population to a safe level in future generations, one that will not tax resources. Two, the population keeps going as it is and the excess numbers will continue to die off. 3. The environmental capacity increased, either through natural events such as increased rainfall and fertility of the land, hence more crops, or through the institution of practices that increase the yield of the environment to support more people. Again, while this will increase the carrying capacity of the environment to a new level, once that new level is reached, the same scenario will play out all over again. These calculations also do not take into account other environmental factors such as disease, or natural catastrophes such as freak storms or earthquakes. These calculations also do not take into account man-made events, including accidents, criminal activities, or war. The fact that a couple won't belt out one child after another from the moment a woman is fertile proves that humans don't reproduce to their maximum reproductive capability, but it does nothing, nothing, 
to refute the fact that the environment puts a maximum cap on population growth. Now here's the next population problem. According to creationists, they've come up with the idea that the flood happened sometime between 4,250 and 4,750 years ago. First of all, if the flood happened after the pyramids were built, then the pyramids, along with the Egyptians who built them and subsequently their history, would have been destroyed. This, of course, did not happen. Secondly, if the flood happened 4,750 years before today, that would have been less than 150 years before the pyramids were due to start construction. Even if this supposed flood happened before the pyramids were built, there simply wasn't enough time to grow a sufficiently large population to construct these large objects.